indisposed, but she should be back within a week or two. And we've all sent a card to, to wish her well. First item on the agenda this afternoon is apologies for absence. Uh, yes, Chair. Apologies from Councillors Howard, Becker and Edwards. And obviously our Chairman Ruth. Um, before we get underway, should we all introduce ourselves for the sake of the people who are watching us on television? Uh, I'm County Councillor Peter Clark and I'm Vice Chairman of the Planning Committee. County Councillor Roger Harris, uh, Opposition Spokesperson. John Rogers, by the Council of Solicitors. Philip Thomas, Development Services Manager. Mark Hand, Head of Planning, Housing and Place Shaping. Uh, Richard Williams, Democratic Services. Craig O'Connor, Development Management Area Manager. Andrew Jones, Development Management Area Manager. Thank you all. Uh, the next item on the agenda this afternoon is declarations of interest. As and when, yeah. Can I just remind everybody that we do expect you all to have your mobile phones switched off um, because it interferes with our uh, equipment, I'm told. The next item on the agenda is to confirm the accuracy of the minutes of the meeting held here at the beginning of January. Move, Chairman. Has anybody got any matters they wish to raise on those minutes? I'd like to take them as read. No. Then we go straight on then to the um, consideration of all the applications before us this afternoon. There are no um, people speaking for or against, just our local members. And so we will take the uh, agenda in sequence this afternoon. Uh, so the first item on the agenda is application uh, 2018-01349 which is at Caldicott. Thank you, uh, Chairman. Craig. Yes, this application is DM 2018-01349. It's for a plot of land, as you can see on the photograph here, between number four and five, Ebu, Ebu Road, Caldicott. Um, the application is for a two-bedroom bungalow, single-storey building, um, and it's to change the use of this um, piece of land as well. So if you'd like to go through the photos, I just remember on site yesterday, you could see there's bungalows either side of this piece of land. And this is the photos from the road and from the other side. This is opposite the application site. And this is on the piece of land looking up towards um, Wentwood Road, Wentwood View. Wentwood View. And there's, a, there's bullards there, which, is, which represents the end of the site. So that is the end of the site from the, from the um, adjacent highway. This is an aerial photograph of the site, and the application site is outlined in red. Um, as you can see there, the built form, and you can see where the buildings are in line. And then this is the application then for the, the dwelling. So, so as I said, it's a, it's a two bedroom bungalow dwelling. As you can see on, on that location plan, you can see there's a uh, pavement to be kept on the side. So that right of way is to be kept um, for permeability and for a link up to the adjacent highway. This is a, the proposed plans, the elevations and the floor plan of the proposals. Um, as you can see, it's a um, standard buff brick um, tiles for the roof and UPVC openings, um, pretty standard to match the other bungalows which are along that street, so it would fit in with the street scene. Um, if you'd like to just look in terms of the dimensions um, of the dwelling, which is outlined in your report, so it's eight point, the plot side is 8.5. 8 metres by 30 metres. Dwelling itself is 7.1 metres wide and it's 18 metres deep. It's got a pitch roof, which measures 4.3 metres to the ridge line and approximately 2.35 metres to the eaves. Um, as you can see, the internal accommodation there is laid out on the floor plan, so standard kitchen, living, dining, bathroom and associated bedrooms. The application site, as you see yesterday, is a it's slightly um, different type of application. It, it forms an area of land which is positioned between four and five um, Ebu Road, and it was previously used as a two way highway um, serving the residential properties in Wentwood View to the northwest. It's, it was actually closed up. Um, looking at the aerial photographs going back to 2000, it's been closed up for about 20 years now, roughly, um, and it and hasn't been used in that manner. And this piece of land is owned by the applicant. Um, even though it has been maintained for highway purposes, it, 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 that link isn't there at the moment. So this application has been has been made. 
In terms of consultation responses and the reason why the application is being presented to planning committee, um, there, are, there is an objection from highways who wanted to retain this um, this highway link, um, even though it's not within their ownership. And as you can see in the report, that they've outlined their reasons why they objecting to the application. Um, Caldecott Town Council have recommended approval of the application and um, there aren't any other raised objections. Public rights of way have um, objected to the proposal, but as you can see, the, there is a there would be retained a link there, so there would be a link through in terms of access and permeability. There are a number of uh, neighbour objections outlined in the report as well, in relation to privacy, overshadowing, and land ownership, um, which are all addressed in the report. Um, there's in terms of um, the history of the site, members should be aware that there were two refusals on this site for a dwelling previously. Um, so there was one back in 1988 um, where there was a refusal based on the layout of the road network. Um, and also there was a refusal in 2005 more recently where the bungalow was a bit bigger than this. It didn't um, have the same sort of form and shape as the, exist the adjacent bungalows um, and there were inaccuracies in the plans. In terms of this application, we felt that this, these proposals now overcome all of those issues for the reasons for, reasons for refusal previously. So in terms of the scale and design of the building, we feel it's acceptable and would be appropriate for the street scene. It wouldn't have a harmful impact and would integrate quite well. It would use an, a piece of land which is currently unused. Um, it's not being used as a highway link, um, so it, it would be beneficial and enhance that area. Um, permeability in terms of the, the pedestrian access, I said that's, that would be retained. Um, we do understand the, the objection raised by highways. Um, however, this would be a, a matter for the applicant to sort out um, and to discuss with the highways authority as to whether this highway link should be extinguished or not. So that would be a legal matter for them to decide outside of the planning. Obviously, in planning, we deal with the principle of whether this development is acceptable. Um, the legal requirements of um, if, it's a, if that highway is to be extinguished would have to be dealt with outside of this. So the granting of planning permission on, on its own is not sufficient justification to extinguish the highway, but as I said, that would have to be sorted out outside of this process. In terms of affordable housing, um, we would be seeking an affordable housing um, contribution of £9,982, and the applicant has agreed to pay this. In terms of residential immunity, we do not feel this dwelling would have a, an acceptable impact on anybody's residential immunity in terms of overlooking or um, privacy. Therefore, for the reasons outlined in the report and subject to the conditions outlined in the report, we are recommending approval of this scheme. There is one condition that we would like to suggest um, in relation to the pedestrian link at the bottom. Um, in the report, there is no condition to say what detail this path is going to be. So we would ask that prior to um, development that we have plans to show how that pavement is going to work and link up to the existing pavement. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Uh, Councillor Joe Watkins is ward, she's not here. Alan, you're the next nearest. Do you have anything to say about this? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, I have no objection to the application at all. I mean, this is an area that's been, for as long as I can remember, the link between that and Wentwood View has never been used. Uh, and at one stage, it was overgrown and in a terrible condition. And I think former councillor Pauline Watts was instrumental in getting the area clean, because it's certainly a lot cleaner there than it was some years ago. Uh, and from a planning application point of view, I think it would be nice to see that area utilised for something rather than left to... Uh, disintegrate and uh, go into a poor condition again. So I would like to propose uh, that we uh, allow this application. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Higginson. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. I, I, I'd like to second that. Um, that bit of, there have been a number of refusals over the years. But the problem with that piece of land there is it's been nothing but an ISO. And uh, the, 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 this application, it would, uh, you know, when uh, the property being uh, cited there will make it, will tidy it up, if I put it that way, in, 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 uh, in common terms. Um, I see no problem with it along the foot with the, is uh, the two foot where you're going to be kept open or just the one? There'll be one on the side, only the one on the sides. Yeah, okay, fine, thank you. And then one at the fr sorry, and then one at the front as well for him. Yeah, right, fine. I, 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 I'd be pleased to second it, Chairman. Thank you very much. Councillor Brown. <clears throat> yes, thank you. Um, I'm not sure, obviously, you've said about the um, path at the front being conditioned. I'm just wondering whether 
um, there needs, a, needs to be any condition to keep that pavement um, free and, you know, not used at all. I mean, I know it shows it in the plan, but there's no condition on that. And I noticed, um, I think Councillor Webb noticed as well, there's a post box very, uh, very near that, um, uh, on that pavement there as well. And obviously you want to make sure that that um, access on the left of the photo is, uh, continues to be maintained. And occasionally in building works, um, there is, um, either intentionally or inadvertently, um, you know, you go over to, to, to the pavement area and it's important that that is kept free to allow for public access. So I don't know whether that is something that could be um, added as a condition at all. The other question I've got is whether or not um, the areas um, that aren't covered by the building, whether they will be uh, porous materials for the drive as well. Thank you. I mean, in terms of the path to the left, I mean, that would be part of the public right of way and maintained by the highways authority. So that would be left to be kept open um, for future use. Um, so the, I don't think there's a need for a condition for that because that has, will be left open. So if, if they wanted to change the public right of way, they'd have to apply for diverted. Going over the other pavement. Obviously, they're going over the other pavement. And, you know, I just thought just to make sure that that doesn't happen. It is outside the red line as well, the application site, is what um, my colleague just said. So that would be left to be left open and free. Okay, and Louise. in terms of porous materials, then we could have the condition for that as well to make it imperial, yeah. Okay, it's been proposed and seconded. Are you all in favor of this application? That's everybody, John. Right. Uh, next application before us this afternoon is number 2018-1470, which is a detached house in the beaches, Wainfield Lane, in Gwellog. <coughs> Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, this application is land adjacent to the beaches in Wainfield Lane in Gwehelog. Phil, if you'd just like to... Um, so this is the application site which members would have seen yesterday. Um, Phil, if you'd like to go to the next photo, it might be easier. That's the beaches currently, which is having some work done in terms of first floor extension and a garage, which is proposed on the site. Sure, that photo is. That's, that's the existing garage on the site and the neighbouring property. This is an aerial photograph of the site. So, if you look where the word site is, that's where the existing garage is, which is to be demolished. It's part of this application. So, in those photographs, then that garage is to be demolished and to be replaced with a dwelling. So this is the proposed site layout. As you can see, there'd be a shared access, and as members seen yesterday, with the existing dwelling, and the new proposed building would be sited between the beaches and Springfield. And there'd be hard standing, and there's park in there at the front there, so for free parking spaces. In terms of dimensions of the, of the building, um, and members were asking yesterday how far it was from the existing dwelling. It's approximately three metres um, from the existing dwelling to the new proposed dwelling and approximately three metres from the new dwelling to the boundary of the neighbouring property. In terms of the dwelling itself, um, it would be 8.4 metres long and 8.2 metres wide. This is the proposed design of the dwelling, so it's to match the existing dwelling on the site and have um, pitch dormers within the roof. It's quite a similar design to the neighbouring property, so rendered, um, same slate roof and same um, type of windows. So that's all to match the existing property. If we go through to the floor plan. Oh, this is the street scene. So this is the proposed street scene as it would look with the garage gone and the hierarchy along the street in terms of the, uh, the ridges of the roofs. So as you can see there, there's a stepping down to follow the topography of the uh, Wainfield Lane. Okay. So um, in terms of the application, um, as you can see, the... Highways have not raised any objections to the proposed development. 
Um, Ecology have also not raised any concerns. The main concerns with this proposal um, have been in regards to drainage, um, and we have, in terms of um, how the drainage is going to be dealt with and the technicalities of how the drainage would, would, would work on the site, because there have been a few issues along Wainfield Lane. Um, build, we asked Building Control to have a look at the planning proposals, which is a private treatment system. Um, they've looked at uh, the drainage details and are satisfied with the percolation tests that have been done on site at adequate and that the drainage can be accommodated on the site. In terms of um, planning, uh, obviously we deal with the principle of whether the drainage can be accommodated at the site. And looking at the plan, if you look at the site plan again, um, Phil, um, you can see in the back there, they've cited out where the private treatment system would go and also a, a drain field there as well um, where any potential uh, drainage and soak waves would, would be able to go. And with a private treatment system, um, it, actually, it actually treats um, the sewerage and um, only outputs clean water um, in terms of not having an impact on the environment. So there, there is a, it is a, a good form of um, system. And in, in the drainage circular, which we look at as planning officers, um, it is the second preferred option uh, for drainage. So it is a, a higher level. Um, the beaches was actually had a cesspit previously, so this is a, a higher level of drainage than that. Um, there's also concern from the neighbouring properties with regards to overlooking and um, privacy issues, but there'd be no windows within the side elevations on the first floor, um, so there's no direct um, overlooking, and we don't feel that the property would be um, unduly overbearing on any other property. In terms of um, affordable housing, um, we did request um, that the dwelling would provide a sum of £29,204. However, after scrutinising the viability of the scheme and the um, the build costs and the development in general, we have negotiated a six thousand um, contribution towards affordable housing, which we we think is fair and justified given the viability of the scheme. So, for all the rationale outlined within your report, officers are recommending that the application is approved, subject to a contribution of £6,000 for affordable housing and for the conditions that are outlined in the report. One of those conditions is that the foul drainage, the full details of the technicality of the drainage, are submitted um, prior to commencement. No, prior to the occupation, sorry, of the dwelling, so that we are satisfied and build the controller satisfied that it's suitable for the site. Thank you very much. Thank you, Craig. Mm -hmm. Councillor Smith, do you wish to address committee? Please, you have six please. minutes and then you have another two minutes for winding up if you so require. Well done. <laughs> Thank you. I think we had better weather yesterday up in Wainfield Lane. Um, as you could see, well, I think you're well aware, many members, of the subdivision of plots and piecemeal development that has become a regular occurrence in Wainfield Lane over the years. That development had been mainly on the opposite side of the lane to this application, where the ground slopes down from the lane and any surplus drains away to the rear of the properties and open ground. This application is on the opposite side of the lane and sits on ground that slopes down to the lane, as you've seen. Therefore, any runoff from the ground cannot cope that the ground cannot cope with will inevitably drain onto Wainfield Lane. There's a considerable concern within the community over the capacity of the ground to cope with and absorb both the surface water and the water from the treatment systems from two dwellings. If approved, this application is deemed appropriate for approval. I would ask members to please ensure that the location of the foul water treatment system is located at the back of the plot, that there be no amendment and no relocation, and that it should be close to the boundary with the beaches so that it is farthest away from the spring field. And also that there be no application which would give any overlooking of the adjacent house spring field. So, and the one good thing I think as well, <laughs> I say the one good thing, it's nice design, I'm very pleased, as are the community, the community council, that the level of the ridges is progressing down. And if you were to drive down the main road, as I did yesterday, there's only one property that is visible from the main road, which I think is good for Monmouthshire. So thank you, members. Thank you, Val. Anybody like to make a comment about it? Councillor Murphy? Yes, thank you, Chair. And, uh, yeah, I, I could see uh, how... Uh, the uh, residents around would have been 
quite alarmed by the original uh, proposals, particularly with the, uh, regard to joining in with an old cesspit that was there before. Uh, clearly, the, um, the uh, treatment plant is going to be a, a big improvement on, on that. Um, it is situated at the, uh, at the, at the back. Um, and centrally, and um, I, I just heard Councillor Smith saying she'd like it closer to the uh, beaches, but looking at that there, um, it's quite a long way away from uh, Springfield's uh, boundary, as is the uh, drain field area. So I think that's probably p pretty well covered now. Um, and um, as for runoff, it's going to be perme permeable uh, services. Um, there could, I suppose, if there was any problem, be um, a little grill at the uh, bottom to uh, take it away. So I think there's engineering solutions there that could cope with anything that was uh, not anticipated in the plans. Um, so I think uh, overall, this, the final version of this is a vast improvement, and I'd be happy to support it. Thank you, Councillor Webb. Thank you, Chairman. One or two things. Um, disappointed with the financial contribution towards affordable housing, bearing in mind it started at around 30,000 and is now down to 6,000, which is a big difference. I don't know how other members feel about that. Um, no garage. Um, I imagine that all the paraphernalia for gardens and all that stuff is going to be at the back of the property. Um, actual fact, this, this spec is really less than you would expect for an affordable house, actually, um, in my view. Um, shared access, not a good idea. Um, but um, I just think I'm just, there's one or two points that I'd like to raise. Thank you. Thank you very much. Councillor Dovey. Thank you, Chair. Um, it was the, uh, the free uh, uh, area outside the property uh, for the uh, soaking off the rainwater and that sort of thing. Um, I, I hear what uh, uh, was said uh, by my fellow councillor about having a grill across at the front, but I, I, I'm minded of the recent uh, um, uh, talk and lecture we had here by this new uh, committee that is um, uh, looking at all the runoffs for new uh, new buildings, etc. And the thing that they're suggesting is that the instead of running off to drains, what you have is soak away through large areas. So a w wider area uh, takes uh, a care of um, the rainwaters, etc. So I would like to see that that, uh, that area for parking, uh, etc., cetera, be um, permeable rather than it, it, it be draining off. Thank you. Do you wish to address that? Yeah, yeah, there is a condition in relation to permeable services for any additional hard standing. As you remember, we're aware yesterday there's an existing hard standing on site at the moment, but any new additional hard standing, there's a condition that say it has to be permeable materials. So that would be covered by that, so that, that would deal with the drainage aspects. Um, in terms of some of the other comments made, um, the shared access, highways actually prefer a shared access for properties because there's only one point of conflict on the highway, so they do actually like to see um, property sharing access, so that would be a preferred option um, from a highways authority point of view. Um, a garage, I understand the point that Councillor Webb's making um, in terms of domestic paraphernalia and, and stuff used to maintain the land. Unfortunately, we can enforce that someone implies for the garage, and I'm sure if the applicants want to do that in the future, they'd be more than welcome to do so. Um, and the affordable housing contribution, yeah, we, obviously as officers we try and ensure that we um, get the, the best amount of financial contribution that, that we can do to um, ensure that we help our housing colleagues. Um, but it does have to go through a vigorous financial viability process and, and we use the, um, our colleague Shirley Wigan uses the free dragon system to go through that and to ensure that the figure we're asking for doesn't negate the development coming forward. And in this case, um, the applicant and Shirley and um, ourselves agree that this is an appropriate level of, of sum um, for this site. Thank you, Craig. Can is our policy at fault then in that case? Sorry, Chairman. Just to mention, I mean, separately from the considerations of this application, um, we are doing some review work on uh, on the SBG on commuted sums um, to, to review what what the evidence is showing us is working and what isn't. So uh, that's being programmed. We'll bring that through to Planning Committee for 
comments and then through a select committee as well um, before consultation. Thank you, Mark. Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you. Um, a couple of questions really um, about um, uh, viability because, um, I mean, I was very much in favour of a policy where um, viabilities were um, sort of publicly published and a, a p policy in relation to that. I mean, I understand that the situation was, was that um, the committee was supposed to be sent um, where the viability was different. We were supposed to be sent details of why it was uh, different on a confidential basis. And I don't think that this has happened in this particular case. Well, I'm certainly not aware, aware of it. And um, when I looked at the previous viability uh, study that we were, were sent on a confidential basis, I was concerned that it relied upon one quote only um, and uh, the costs were work, worked out as a result of that. So I think if there is quite a large drop in uh, the viability contribution, I'm, I'm not sure whether or not um, the committee would want to uh, defer it so they could actually have a look at the figures and consider whether or not other quotes should be obtained because obviously there's quite a drop between 29, uh, nearly 30,000 and 6,000. Um, the second point I'd like to make, um, Chairman, is in relation to the um, condition um, in um, number, number four of the report and whether or not it's sufficient to ensure that um, the, the, the drainage system, as uh, Councillor Smith mentioned when she was talking about, won't be moved in, you know, at a later, uh, you know, a changing condition or anything of that nature and wondered if it could be a bit more future-proofed. The other question I've got is um, on uh, surface drainage itself because obviously you can have, um, you know, if it, if, there was, if it was a normal system whereby um, sewage went into the main sewage system and surface water um, from drain, from, um, basically um, gutters around, around the, the property, then you would normally have a, a soak away. Now, I don't know whether this system um, that they've got here deals with both, but I'm just wondering whether it might be more um, efficient to have a, a separate soak away as you would in a normal house. And apparently, according to the suds talk we had, you can get quite good soakaways and then have a, a, another system that deals with the sewage. I'm afraid I don't know enough about how these private sewage treatments works, but I think it's something that um, possibly should be uh, considered. Thank you. Thank you. Craig, do you want to address that? Yeah, um, in terms of the affordable housing, yeah, apologies, Chair. Um, we had agreed that we'd send viability info um, for the committee confidentially, um, but I haven't done it on this case. Apologies for that. Uh, in terms of the quotes, um, it doesn't work quite like that. We'll, we'll have information in from developers about what their bill costs are. We don't ask multiple quotes. We compare that against the BCIS um, bill construction industry standard figures um, and also our own knowledge or primarily Shirley's knowledge, to be fair, um, around what bill costs should be and other professional fees. So we don't go out there asking for three different quotes from different companies. Um, they give us the prices they've got and we'll compare them against standards um, to see if they think uh, they are, are reasonable or not. We, we certainly are satisfied on this um, with the information they've provided and what we believe is, is viable and what isn't. Um, and have managed to negotiate. Um, they're arguing the site wasn't viable at all, I believe, but we've managed to negotiate the contribution um, that Craig's mentioned. So I'm, I'm certainly comfortable with what I've seen um, and what's proposed, but we'll certainly uh, make sure we adhere to that in the future, Chair, um, and, uh, and provide you with that information. Um, the other points, I can pass back to Craig on if that's all right, the other details. So that was in terms of the service water. Um, but as, as so in terms of the service water, so the, again, so the, any new additional hard standing would be permeable, so that would then naturally drain out. And with regards to the treatment system, um, I'm not, as, in terms of technical, and knowing how it actually works myself. And obviously, that, that's my building control colleagues who would deal with that, or the improved, approved inspector, but they would have to ensure that that didn't cause any harm to public health um, is sufficient for the, for the site, and also any run runoff um, didn't have a harmful impact 
on the natural environment. And they'd also have to, if they are draining off into any um, drainage uh, streams or water courses in the area, they'd have to get a license off Natural Resources Wales. Um, so that would be an informative on any application as well. Um, so it would be covered um, in terms of the technicalities of how that treatment system would work. It would be covered by a building control colleague to approve that, and they'd have to do that prior to the occupation. Obviously, with this development, given the sensitivities along the lane, we have conditioned that as well to show that, so that we can share that internally with building control as well, to ensure there's that sort of second level of, of checking it really as well. Yeah, um, looking at the condition itself under four, I, th I think it could be worded better myself because it says prior to the occupation of the dwelling hereby approved, the works for disposal of foul and surface water drainage shall be provided in accordance with the uh, approved plans. I think really you, you could add something and and um, up to the satis and satisfied by um, planning and, and building control because there isn't anything about that and the other thing is on soakaways it's not just draining down into to the land it actually you have, have to have some um, piping underneath because I know because I've had uh, soakaways replaced and we've had um, their actual structures that you have underneath as opposed to just the water going down so I think um, uh, you know it's something that does need to be uh, looked at and to make sure that we're providing the best system that's possible thank you Oh. Yeah, in terms of the, the drainage and the soakaways and how that works, it would depend on the infiltration rates on that site, so it depends on what obviously the soils, clay, depends on, so that would depend on what piping work would be there and whether it would be sufficient, and again, building control would look and review that. In terms of your comments and um, suggestions for condition four, then we can certainly look to address some of that. Yeah. But you can't, you can't actually um, condition that it's in agreement with building control because uh, that would be ultra virus. You can't phrase conditions like that. Uh, it wouldn't accord with the circular. So uh, we could ask for details and approve them. We may consult building control in the process, but we wouldn't uh, phrase a condition in that, that sort of manner. But it's we should also not overlap with other legislation, which is there to cover um, technical do, But detail. shouldn't it also say and approved by the um, MCC planning? Uh, department because it doesn't actually say that it just says approved plans do you see what I mean Yeah, yeah. I'm just checking I understood what the, what the scenario is. There's two different ways of doing this. Um, if we have details and we're happy with them, then we just say do it as per the plans you've submitted. If we don't have details or we're not happy with them, we say give us details and we'll approve them, then carry it out as per those approved details. So we're in the first category. They've given us details. We're happy with them. We're just saying do it as per those details. Okay, yeah, so um, we word it to say as per the, um, the the drainage details that are submitted as part of this application. Words to that effect. I understand what you mean. Thanks. Okay, Councillor Alan Davis. Thank you, Chair. Just one comment. I mean, I think Councillor Brown is quite right to raise this issue in terms of what we're looking at in, the, in terms of money for affordable housing. It is a concern for many committee members, I think. I understand you're reviewing uh, the current system, but I, when we get such a spectacular difference between the original estimate and, uh, and what we actually end up with, I think as members, we need to be satisfied that that, that system, you know, is as it should be. Um, so I, I, you know, I, I'd certainly like to be in, have information about how the review is going and some idea of what the time scale is, uh, because I, it's difficult to explain to me the you know, difference between nearly thirty thousand and six thousand pounds, and I think it might be difficult for those people who want affordable housing as well. Uh, we these pla these sites must be viable. We all appreciate that, but but I, I've never been really clear about how we actually calculate these things, to be honest with you, and, and why there are two figures which are so widely distributed. So I think that, for, for the committee's point of view, we, we need more information. I don't think that this application should be deferred on that, on the basis that you didn't send us the information, but certainly in the future we would hope to have that information. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, thank you, Chair, and just picking up on the, that point, um, um, clearly, we can't uh, we can't hold hold the, 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 this one up because it's under review. <clears throat> but some uh, some sort of um, uh, briefing session 
uh, so that we thoroughly understand what the new arrangements would be would be uh, very useful. Um, I was just going to uh, point out, I'm, I'm sure everybody's seen it, but it hasn't been mentioned during the discussion on um, on uh, the package uh, treatment plant and, and uh, method of drainage disposal, but it, it does actually say in the informatives um, that the developer is advised to contract Natural Resources Wales regarding the regulation of the package treatment plant method of drainage disposal. So, um, so uh, there is that additional uh, additional uh, section in there uh, that seems to deal with runoff. Thank you very much. Anybody else? No. Councillor Smith, do you wish to sum up, or are you are okay? No, okay. Thank you, okay. Thank you. Does anybody wish to move this one way or the other? You're moving approval. No, is it seconded? No, uh, Okay. Those in, in favour of this application, please show. Is everybody? Okay. Well, there's nobody against. Thank you all very much. And we go on now to page 25 uh, for 144 dwellings at Undy. I think this is you, young Andrew. Yes, thank you, Chair. Uh, so this application is for the detailed consideration of the first phases for the allocated strategic housing site known as Rockfield Farm. Uh, on the edge of the settlement of Undy. Uh, most of the members were there yesterday, but certainly for the benefit of those that weren't, we just quickly run through the photographs. Uh, on your screen now, you can see a view taken from the elms looking to the east, and then the next one is also taken from the elms. That's looking along the highway to the north. Well, uh, again, on, on the elms looking to the south, some wider views coming up. That's looking down within the site to the south. I think you can perhaps just see there as well the allotments where we were stood yesterday. And that's a view to the north. You can see the M4 then uh, along the northern edge of the site. And again, there's a view then looking back down the south of the site, clearer view of the allotments we were stood in. And that's a view then um, to the adjoining uh, sort of settlement and the properties of Rockfield Grove. Um, just quickly look at some of these sort of site plans. So that's the site there. Um, the application site you can see edged in red. The wider, I think it's supposed to be brown shading, is the, is the site in its entirety. Uh, Phil, if you can just go on. So in terms of this application site, say this is only for the first phases, and this red edge here is the extent of this reserve matters application. Uh, sort of showing again the site um, in, in, its, in its broken down phase form and we're considering the phases to the east. Um, so before we go on to the other layout, um, I say outline planning commission was granted by committee in March of last year with all matters reserved except for access which was considered and approved. Uh, a new T-junction access along the southern extent of the site uh, onto the B4245 was approved. And you can see that it's actually just below the architect's signature uh, in the right-hand corner. So this reserve matters application submitted by Bellway Homes is uh, for the first phases, which would total 144 dwellings, of which, as per the outline permission, 25% would be affordable, which equates on the ground to 36 units. Um, and with regard to some of the, the key features of the site, i just point those out now at the outset. Uh, these would include uh, a green corridor that runs through the uh, centre of the site. So if you can jump to the next one, or just slip back to that one. So just for, just for members' benefit, I've just touched on then the affordable housing. The units there you can see uh, shaded purple are the affordable units. So if you want to just go on to the... That, is, uh, that just shows the highway, high, highway hierarchy. So through the site in, in the yellow is the primary route. There are secondary routes then in green, uh, in green and some shared routes uh, as well connecting. But that, that's the main artery through the site linking up to the elms there on the western side. So just to say, just to point out some key features at, at the outset. So you've got the main route running through the site um, from west, uh, east to west, uh, and, and a green corridor. You've got um, attenuation bond basins at the access onto the B4245. Thank you, Phil. And you can also see 
to the southern edge, there's a, an area of play. Uh, and those are some of the sort of the key um, elements of the site. So the layout and design of the scheme has, has been subject to negotiation uh, with the case officer. The development uh, as a whole has been split into three character areas. Uh, the gateway zone, perhaps Phil, if you can just slip back a few slides. Like colored. Yeah, so you've got the, the gateway zone in blue, uh, a street zone in gre uh, green, sorry, yellow, and uh, a green edge zone appropriately in green. So these have been designed to sort of create character areas within the site for legibility purposes. Um, and whilst property types will remain sort of consistent across the development, there will be suitable differences in external materials and architectural styling uh, in each of these areas. And as I say, officers are of the view that this will help to provide distinctive elements that will assist legibility and orientation within the site. So in terms of officers' consideration, uh, whilst the principle of development and access has already been considered the outline stage, there's still a number of uh, material planning considerations at this stage. Um, firstly, the site uh, would be slightly under the 30 dwellings per hectare target set out in policy uh, DES 1 and would equate to approximately 26.6 dwellings per hectare. Um, however, in this instance, officers are satisfied that the developable area is in reality smaller due to constraints on the site, and these include drainage access, existing safeguarding areas, uh, and the need to provide appropriate sustainable surface water disposal, open space and play facilities. So mindful of the, uh, uh, also mindful of the position on the eastern edge of the existing settlement, um, as an edge of settlement site, it's considered appropriate for a slightly lower density in this instance. External finishes throughout the site uh, will include the use of buff and red brick, uh, as well as painted render and, and some properties with a stone finish. All doors would be white UPVC, with black UPVC rainwater goods and barge boards and fascias to all dwellings. So I've touched on it before, but with regards to in green infrastructure, uh, as already stated, this is a key characteristic of the site, uh, and there would be a green corridor, as you've seen, that runs through the site. A new landscaping buffer would be provided along the northern boundary of the site that would use, in part, hedgerow translocated from the southern part of the elm. So where hedgerow is taken away from the sort of southwesterly corner to make vehicle access, that would be translocated and reused elsewhere. Um, the hedgerow along the north of the elms um, would be approximately five meters in depth. So the new, numerous other elements of strategic street planting uh, outside of private ownership, uh, in particular these have been added in the northern part of the site, which is the most elevated and most visible. So you can see there, the sort of nor most northerly row of properties where you've sort of got sort of key vistas and views through. Um, introduction of street planting was considered to help break up the built form. So uh, I say an area of open space for play has been made larger and less formal, uh, and this is surrounded by dwellings that are now orientated towards it, uh, providing natural surveillance uh, as well as making the area a clear focal point. Uh, as noted previously, the access to the site has already been approved as part of the outline permission. However, the council's highway engineer is satisfied, uh, offers no objections to the layout and the parking provision. The layout has been confirmed to have been an adoptable standard, whilst a total of 396 parking spaces would be provided. So the site would have a simple street hierarchy, as I said earlier, with the primary road crossing the site from the entrance from the B4245 through to the Elms, with a number of secondary and shared routes all linking back to the primary route. Uh, and as per the outline application, the lower part of the Elms would be uh, subject to a traffic order to extinguish it for vehicle use, and then it would be re-engineered as a pedestrian and bicycle route between this site and the existing Rockfield Grove Estate. Uh, with regards to heritage impact, um, during the consideration of the outline application, Glamorgan Gwent Archaeological Trust, the Council's professional advisors, did identify an archaeological constraint on site. Uh, some prehistoric material was discovered, although this was not of national importance, it was considered to be regionally significant. Uh, however, subject to a condition requiring works to be fully carried out, 
with, uh, in accordance with details of a written scheme of investigation, Glamorgan Gwent offer no objection. Uh, in addition, CADU have raised no objection with regard to the impact of the development on the nearest scheduled ancient monuments. Uh, they note that the development would only have a very slight adverse impact on, on these and say, therefore, no objection. Uh, so, as highlighted during the outline stage, much of the site will re require a form of noise mitigation owing to its distance to the M4. Uh, so further noise survey work has been carried out since the outline stage, and accordingly, a two metre high acoustic fence would be installed along the northern boundary of the site. Um, this would define the rear gardens of these properties, um, but it would be screened uh, via the five metre thick landscape buffer I mentioned earlier. Uh, other properties within the site would employ acoustic glazing and mechanical ventilation, uh, and therefore subject to a condition requiring that these mitigation measures being carried out, the council's environmental health officer is satisfied with the proposals uh, and ag agrees that it uh, is in accordance with technical advice note 11 with respect to noise. Uh, as the outline application was approved in March of last year, and the reserve, matter, reserve matters application is before us now, the scheme does not require formal approval from the uh, SUDS approval body we've already discussed at this meeting. However, the scheme does still include a number of sustainable drainage solutions, including attenuation ponds and swales, all of which are linked to an encrypt integral drainage system for surface water runoff. Perhaps the most significant of these would be the swale, if you go back to the, that one, yeah, the swale which runs, you point, show that one, Phil, yeah. runs through the site uh, down to a basin at the bottom. So, say, so whilst it's not subject to that, the new statutory body, uh, clearly it's, it's taking its sustainable drainage seriously. Uh, it's proposed that foul flows, foul flows from the site would be discharged into the existing public sewers with no objection offered by Welsh Water. Uh, so as I touched upon earlier, the scheme would be fully compliant with affordable housing policy uh, and as agreed at the outline stage, so 36 units would be affordable and these would include 12 one-bed flats, 16 two-bed houses, seven three-bed houses, one four-bed house. And this mix has been agreed by the council's housing officer who's confirmed that they're appropriate to local need and that all units are fully DQR compliant. Just quickly run through the house types because we haven't, haven't covered those explicitly for you. So this, um, this is not one of the affordables. No, this is just a typical house type. And again, this is uh, one of the sort of Properties that would use stone, this would be featured on the site frontage. And again, just this, say the mix of, of brick and render. I think, do believe we've got some of the, so this would be um, the social affordable housing flats. And this is an example of one of the affordable, I believe this is the two bed. Yeah, this would an, an example of the two bed. So it, it's again, it, it's similar in appearance to the market housing. So there isn't that sort of distinction between affordable and market. I think we've also got the um, affordable three bed there as well. So again, it's 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 not visually distinct from um, the wider site. So, in conclusion, officers of the view that the proposal provides a simple and coherent layout. The dwellings themselves would reflect and be appropriate to the context, the site, and its locality. Uh, the scheme is also considered to deliver on green infrastructure opportunities with welcome linkages connecting it to its surroundings as well as to a well-defined area of informal play. Uh, therefore, subject to the conditions set out in the officer's report, the application is presented to members with a recommendation for approval. Thank you very much, Andrew. Once again, it's Councillor um, Joe. She's not here this afternoon. The nearest member? Yes. Councillor Evans, do you wish to add? Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, whilst on site, yes, I think there was a lot of, a lot of questions raised about uh, entrance into the site um, and the layout of it. Um, I've got nothing against the application, but one question I'd like to ask the officers, um, the, roadway, the roadways on the site, are they wide enough 
to allow access to emergency services, ash bin pickups, because we've had this before, especially up uh, in, in the north, where enough sp if people are parking on the road, there's not enough room for services to go up there. And looking at that layout, it didn't seem there was enough room. So I would like to have that clarified first before I go on. Thank you, David. Yeah, Andrew. Yeah, the, yes, thank you, uh, Councillor. The, the applicant has provided um, drawings I illustrating you know, uh, fire vehicle tracking and, and things like ref larger refuse vehicle tracking. So it has been to, designed to accommodate um, those issues. Hopefully that, that satisfies your, your concern, Councillor. Thank you. Um, and I was pleased to, to, to notice that the highways have got no objections to it, uh, and they, they put a, a, a input into this application. So I'd have no fears at all about uh, uh, asking for council to um, ex ex accept this plan application. Thank you, David. Councillor Murphy. Yeah, thank you, Chair. And I've got no problems with the uh, with the um, overall development or the uh, layout. I'm quite happy to uh, second the uh, the uh, application. Um, I I was concerned and I'm still to a certain extent about some of the uh, design. The most, they're not the most inspiring of, uh, of, of designs, although um, it's, it's much better to see them in photographs like uh, th this. Or the, I don't know if they photographs or, or com computer-generated uh, mock-ups, but, but they certainly look a lot better than the, the actual plans th themselves. What I, what, what I would request is, is that is that um, we we have officers have a discussion perhaps to take back to the delegated panel or design panel um, about overhangs, soffits, fascias, uh, sills, millions. Um, they've concentrated on the the fronts of these properties, but you know the backs appear to be a little bit of an an afterthought, and I know that's not in the the uh, street scene, but it, it does it does strike me that we're we're spoiling the ship for eight with the tar really. So I I, I would like officers to have uh, further discussions with the uh, developer just to see if we can sharpen up on some of the d design features. Um, these properties going to be up a, a long time and they're going to look very sad, I think. So um, if the, if that could be uh, brought back, uh, then I think that would be of benefit. Councillor Hainson. Yeah, just a quick comment, Chairman, I mean, if I may, regarding the, the B4245, and the, um, there'd be a need to restrict the traffic speed on approaching from the rugged side of it um, from 60 down to 30, but they'll need to move the, the, the signage back because traffic will have to, uh, you know, as it stands at the moment, traffic is still do about, about 60 just on that point there. So they need to, the highways need to consider moving the restriction notices back a bit farther towards Rogat to enable safe passage, if you like, in and out of that particular site. Okay, what will we tell highways? Uh, yeah, thank you, Councillor. Yeah, the, the entire access um, of the new junction on the B245 obviously would be subject to the, the Section 278 agreement with, with highways. Um, so, yeah, they'll, they'll consider all, all the safety aspects uh, as part of that process. Um, could um, you confirm, Andrew, um, I know we've got lots of planning applications that have been approved and haven't started yet, um, but with this one, does, does the commencement date apply to the previous approval or does it apply to these? I know there's lots of conditions here they've got to apply for before they actually get um, can start, but um, I just want to know when the start date could possibly be, please. Yeah, yeah thank you, Councillor Webb. Yeah, on the outline um, planning permission, um, condition two is that the development hereby approved must begin either before the expiration of five years or the date of this permission, obviously that was, was last year, um, or before the expiration of two years from the date of the approval of the last reserve matter. So it would, would link back to, to back the outline. To the thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Brown. Yes, thank you, uh, Chairman. I'd certainly support, support the suggestion put forward by uh, Councillor Murphy, because looking at it, I think condition two talks about um, 
uh, basically getting uh, samples of the proposed external uh, finishes. But I think what, what we're actually talking about is more to do with um, policy DES1, which says all development should be of a high quality, sustainable design and respect the local character and distinctiveness of Monmouthshire's Monmouth built historic and natural environment. And then on C, it says respect the existing form, scale, siting, massing materials and layout of its setting and any neighbouring quality buildings. I mean, we did notice that the neighbouring buildings did have things like barge, but, um, barge boards around them and, and were about to do, uh, you know, came, came across as a, a less basic design in some cases. So, I mean, it's difficult because obviously there seems to be a difference when you look at the pictures as opposed to when you look at the plans, but I think it would be something that um, I would certainly support the idea of a, an extra condition about the delegated panel having a look at this um, further. So if we could add, add that as a condition, please. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, Councillor. Councillor Dovey? Sorry, Good Councillor morning. Powell first, then you've added. Thank you, Chairman. Well, going back to the sign, this picture in front of us, sorry, this picture in front of us now is, is, is very pleasing to look at, but some of the other pictures with the other uh, were rather bland, weren't they, and, and flat. I don't know whether uh, there could be more, more of this type of design and not so much as the flat. You know, does it cost that much more to, to do them like this? <laughs> it, you know, it's quite pleasant. I mean, we've got some in Monmouth like that up Rockfield State there, and they look, they're very good. Um, but I don't, you know, as you say, leave it to the delegated panel to have a look at it. But I think, by, according to, um, um, about barge boards, I think every house has to have barge boards, surely. <laughs> Doesn't it? No, no. Oh. You can have a house without barge boards. I thought you had to have them. No. Oh, that's something you learn every day. <laughs> yeah, just, just a few points there to come back on. Yeah, the, the, on the barge boards, yeah, all properties would have black QBVC barge boards. I, I take members' concerns about so I think it's perhaps some of the drawings um, with their compressed form perhaps yeah. truly do them justice. The, the images you see um, on the screen now taken from Bellway's website, sort of showing examples of uh, perhaps at a, at a be much better resolution uh, as to certainly what some of the roofing details would look like that do show that, let's say, the black UBC barge board so that perhaps the, the, um, the 2D drawings don't, don't perhaps do it justice. Um, and he yeah, obviously noted about if members wanted to put a condition on about one to ten overhang details and as well as daily panel reviewing some of the, the minor sort of window details. Mark? A journey to reiterate what Andrew's just said. Um, some of this conversation to come up from the site visit yesterday. So if you skip on a picture, um, you, you might recall me mentioning this scheme, um, which is uh, close to, to where I live, um, the Bellways building, which has got the uh, the black fascias and the barge, barge boards, um, and also the overhangs. Uh, so this, this is an image of the show home off the website. Um, it hasn't come out as crisp on here as it was on the computer, but you should be able to see uh, a fairly big shadow on the front gable. Um, so I had a drive round yesterday um, after our meeting um, and, and every house that's being built does have that same level of detail and it's, it's a decent overhang. Um, so we'll be able to get confirmation from the applicant that uh, it's the same proposal and perhaps a plan just to, to demonstrate that. Uh, and we'll also discuss with them and uh, with delegated panel uh, the detailing on the rear of the houses that you've, you've raised. can't turn it off and I can't turn it on. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm not, not over enamoured with this, uh, uh, this development, as uh, I must say. Um, these pictures that we have seen here are now uh, what you would expect them to, say, to show us, and that would be the best that they can to make sell the site to us. Um, that isn't representative of the whole of this site. Um, I, I, I think the overall quality of design for this site is really very poor. I, I really do. I think it lacks style. It lacks any sort of thought. It doesn't refer to 
Uh, anyway, the um, housing around it, it doesn't make any attempt to um, fit in with its surroundings. It, it, it really doesn't do anything for the area. The one thing that comes out of it is, well, we don't see any pictures of the affordable houses. You see what they want to show us, but on the whole, we, is that affordable? It is that you just thinking like that? We, we well, on the whole, we don't see we don't see uh, um, pictures of the affordable houses. The if you look at the uh, lower cost houses, I mean, there is nothing, absolutely nothing, to recommend them. A child could draw a box like we are being shown there, tart it up with a little bit of colour and whatnot. What is that? What 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 is that uh, trying to do? We say that we want to make our affordable houses part of the overall development of an estate where they blend in to the estate. You could you could pick them out, anybody could pick out what the affordable houses are in there because of the paucity of design that's gone into them and the effort. I, I just think it's awful. And to make a couple of more general points, we talk a lot about, we talk about, um, uh, a lot about Monmouthshire and guarding it and how we want to keep it, etc. And we go bend over backwards to do that in uh, rural areas and we ponder over design there at, and it, it, we make a great deal of effort. I am really concerned about what we are lead, leaving in our urban areas because we are not giving that the same amount of attention for, en for anybody to come along and judge us on the standards of what we're leaving. That's what I think. I think that we, as a council, should be forcing uh, these uh, developers to take more care of the image that they're putting down in areas more, re reflect more of the character in, house, in housing in these areas and really do make the effort to, to see that affordable housing blends in better with uh, anywhere, anywhere else. I wouldn't want anybody to come along in 10, 15, 20 years time when I'm long dead and gone Maybe I'm not, I'll haunt you if I'm not, anyway. Um, when I'm long dead and gone, and say, what were they thinking of when they were putting this stuff up? And uh, so I can't go with it. Yeah, thank you, Chairman. Thank you, Chair. Uh, mine was very short in comparison to David's. Uh, I, I, f for me, it's always about finding that sweet spot between what the market will, 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 um, will take, what the market will accept, what the profitability is for the developer to allow him to deliver us 25% affordable houses. 25% uh, affordable houses to me is, 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 um, is uh, an admirable target, and to me, I think that's something we should hold on to. Um, I hear what people are saying about design, I hear people, you know, but, but is that out of place amongst a lot of the other designed houses and other design developments we've had across the county and, and elsewhere in Cardiff and across the, you know, across the, the whole of the country, really? Um, the only bugbear that I have with these sorts of developments is when they use stone. They don't tend to, or they don't always use local stone. And so only, my only thing to the Delhi panel would be to say that um, when you look at the stone to ensure that it is local stone, they built some houses in Monmouth and used flint from Wiltshire, which looks out of place considerably. Thank you. Thank you, Matt. Yeah. Matt. John Lewis. Louise. Yes, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, I think um, we've got to be very careful here and make sure that this is um, properly uh, conditioned because, um, you know, according to uh, the policy DES1, uh, because if we're not careful, I mean, we've seen those pictures. Um, but it's not the pictures that we um, put forward uh, for a consent. It's the approved plans and drawings. And at the moment, um, 
basically were not happy with the drawings. And I do think, I, I understand what um, uh, Councillor Feekins has said about, um, you know, the balance between um, affordable and so forth. So, so forth, but I think uh, a major developer should, should be able to stretch to a few barge boards to make things uh, look a bit more in place, and I don't, I don't think that is stretching it too much, to be honest, because they are very bland and plain, and they don't blend in very well, and I think we just need that, that extra uh, detail on the, on the design, so I think it's important that if this... Um, if this is approved by the committee, that we're very careful that we don't get misled by those uh, flash uh, pictures showing the top end of the market, and you know, be careful that we're not approving something that we don't actually want to approve because we're concerned about the um, uh, design, the quality of the design and the features of it. I don't think it's it's going to be necessarily a major alteration. It is going to be things like barge boards and sills and things like that, which I don't think is, is beyond uh, uh, reason in terms of asking for. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Harris. Thank you, Chair. <clears throat> this is for the um, officers. As far as I'm aware, the build quality, or this is what I've been told in the past, the build quality of the affordable housing is to a higher standard because it has to last longer than the rest of the stuff around the estate. Can you confirm that? Yeah, yes, uh, Councillor Harris. Yeah, um, they are DQR standard design quality recommendations, which you're referring, yeah. And, and um, Shirley Wigan, the housing officer, has confirmed that these, all 36 of all units would meet DQR standard. No, Mark? Yeah, Chair, I don't really want to prolong the debate because we're essentially going around in circles. Um, I just wanted to say, I think, well, I think we, we completely understand some of the design concerns, Richard. I think one or two of the comments are a bit harsh. Um, we, we've shown you the, um, the plans put in, which are, you know, are just flat elevation drawings and probably don't show it to its, its best qualities. Um, but we have shown you the affordable housing units and we are happy as officers, they do blend in, in terms of quality materials, finishes. Um, they do have barge boards and eaves. Uh, we will get that detail for you on the extent of the overhang. Um, I'm, I'm confident personally that it is doing what you want it to do, um, but we'll get that plan to demonstrate that. And as I mentioned earlier, we'll talk to the applicant about the, uh, the sills uh, and headers on the, uh, the side and rear renovations as well, um, and bring that back to a delegated panel. Um, but uh, I think um, the other points have been made around the affordable housing um, and the quality that will be, and also the proportion. Um, and again, yeah, a bit of a reminder not to... Uh, wholly get fixated on a particular architectural style you have in mind. Um, the other thing we need to consider is the place making and the space we're creating um, around uh, the, uh, the homes themselves and the links into the surrounding community, um, all of which as proposed uh, complies with what we wanted from the outline consent. Um, so we, we do support the application, Chair. Um, we, uh, we support it coming forward uh, and uh, I'm recommending approval, but we're happy to uh, negotiate on those details and bring that back to the delegated panel. Thank you very much. David? Very briefly, Chair. I, sorry, very briefly. I appreciate what Matt said. I appreciate that there is a balance that you have to strike to, for profitability against what you are going to um, deliver. What I'm just saying is it, 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 it's design. And um, I heard what uh, Mark said about placemaking and whatnot. In, that's fine, but we should be trying to reflect, if you love, what is, ha what, is, what is in the areas that is good. I mean, th that doesn't happen, happen either. It doesn't re reflect what is happening around them. It isn't as if you're starting with um, the, one of the uh, areas on, on, on the uh, outskirts of uh, Newport. I, I appreciate what you can do there, but you're, you're in the uh, middle of an established community here, and it should in, in some way reflect those, those ticks, if you like, that make a community a whole thing. And no, none of that is here. I mean, this is, this is uh, uh, well, it, it's, 
it's, uh, it's, it's in a state designed by a machine and not, and, and not, I'm not particularly by skilled architect, I would say. Thank you, Chair. Quickly, Louise, because you've had one. Yeah, I think, I think all the points I wanted to make, I appreciate, I appreciate what uh, uh, Councillor Harris has uh, said about the standards for affordable housing, but they, they tend to be uh, interior standards in, in terms of uh, the dwelling size itself, but they're not anything about what the external appearance of it is looks like and it's really just basically just to make sure that the external ap uh, appearance blends in well with the other dwellings and that's really all we're asking for thank you Chancellor Webb thank you Mr Chairman that we're in desperate need of homes in this county yeah, I've got yeah. to concur with, my, with what Matt has said unless they're viable they won't be built and um, this is really really important just one thing can I just ask Mark we were going to look at amenity areas weren't we? we were going to have a, a, sh a short paper on how much amenity area we do expect with each house as well I think at some stage but that's another point thank you yeah Chair, that report was actually something different it's um, supplementary planning guidance on um, small infill plots um, you know when people are building a house in somebody's garden um, so we'll look at things like amenity space for those but not for uh, for big schemes. However, I would say that is something that we consider at application stage and we are happy with the amenity space, the private garden space and the public open spaces um, proposed as part of this. Thanks, Chair. Thank you, Mark. Can we have the meeting with the Delhi panel before we go back to the developer rather than afterwards so we don't have to have two bites of the cherry? Yeah. Thank you. Could I just say, Chair, okay. I, I was not saying and I did not say that the, the estate shouldn't be viable. No, I no. didn't oh, say okay. that we, at we've all. Got the point, don't we? And uh, I acknowledge uh, what Roger said, um, right. and that was something right, I should go. have included. Roger and I and Ruth will sit down with the officers and have a little chew at it before it goes back to the developer. Right. Can somebody please move it one I, way or the other? I moved it, Chair. Is it seconded? I right. second it, Chairman. Oh, the three of you now. Okay. <laughs> all those in favour of the development, please show. And you're against, David, is it? Yes, I'm against. Right. Okay, one against. Thank you, John. Right, we now go on to page shumpf, page uh, 45, application um, for uh, a link on this building. Don't know whether we can afford it. So, yeah. No, she's not coming. Unless she's changed her mind. Oh, so, do you want to come down front, Sarah? Yeah. Okay. Well, she sit with Val. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Uh, this is for the the. If you sit over on the on the left right hand side, that's it. I don't want you influencing Matt Beacons. <laughs> <laughs> <All right. laughs> Thank you. Okay. Um, okay, this is an application for the link uh, from our current building to the J block, which as members will know has been refurbished to be uh, council accommodation. Uh, so that shows where the link will run at first floor from the newer building to the older. Uh, again, that shows where it is, and it'll sit above where that little portico is. Uh, 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 well, whatever that uh, en entrance feature is. There we go. Um, so you'll see it would sit in there, into the, moving to the old building from the, uh, from the new. I'll show you better drawing in a moment. It's that hatched bit right at the top, so it will uh, enter into the uh, old building at first floor uh, and then access the corridor into the accommodation. And that would be the link there. It's slightly higher at the modern building's end, uh, so it'll, there'll have to be a slight ramp down to the older building, but we, it will be uh, Equality Act compliance. I think it'd be one in 12, I think it is, which is... Um, accessible to a wheelchair user or other um, uh, other users uh, who are less able, or ambulant, I should say. 
Um, yeah, it would be clad in the uh, the metal, the grey metal that you see on the, the upper parts of this present building, um, and uh, we would recommend approval. There is one condition in late correspondence regarding uh, a relatively narrow uh, corridor uh, window of time they've got to actually implement this, given the bat season, so they'll need to get this done fairly sharpish before the warmer months emerge and bats start uh, using the area um, as they're actually obviously creating holes in the old and new building. So uh, that does need to uh, be added, violate correspondence uh, to, the, to any decision. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Uh, Councillor Smith, do you wish to address Councillor about this? No. Um, well, yes, well, either yes or no. Yes. Uh, uh, don't work. You'll hear me. Um, I had a tour around that building, and it was like going down memory lane. And what is proposed is, is good, is fine. Um, pity about the level, the drop-in level, gentlemen. But um, no, I haven't any problems with the... I had reservations about the original proposals, but walking around there again and seeing the old place, I think they're good proposals. Thank you. Anybody wish to speak on it? Councillor Murphy? Move approval, Chair. Is that second? Is anybody against? Right, all those for fa in favour, show your hand. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Chair. Um, this is a site we've uh, seen last year as well. There was a previous planning application on this site for a similar scheme uh, for five dwellings, three of which are affordable to market houses. So it's what we call a 60-40 uh, site, housing site, and it's allocated in the LDP for that purpose. The difference with this current scheme is that it's actually a larger site. Uh, so if I run through the photos, uh, you'll, we'll get to the plans and that might explain better what the changes are to the previous scheme. By the way, the previous scheme, which was considered at May's committee last year, was resolved to be approved, but the Section 106 wasn't completed uh, because of this uh, change to the scheme. So uh, it's now revised and there's a separate application, which is now before you. That's the approach from Geth in place. So the members who were there yesterday via the minibus uh, drove up there. Um, and then there's a turning area to the uh, to the left, as you can, uh, as we saw off screen. That's the field where the uh, houses are proposed to be built. Uh, it shows them more. It's obviously open at the moment, so there's a need to landscape it to enclose it. Uh, and that's looking over back towards uh, the uh, other side of the field. Again, another fo similar photo. Uh, it's a bit dark, sorry, that, but that's the hedgerow there that separates the existing housing from the field, uh, and that's where there are, I think there's three bungalows there, served off that little cul-de-sac. Uh, so that shows the uh, dotted blue line shows the actual uh, boundary as per the LDP, and the red edge is the enlarged site boundary uh, uh, via this current planning application. And the reason for that is to accommodate a drainage ditch in the southern part of the site, which is part of a uh, surface water management scheme, uh, not only for this site, but also for uh, a current, to resolve the current flooding, surface water flooding pro problem in the, um, in the village itself. So uh, it's an outline application, so all matters are reserved, um, including access, but the indicative access there shows a cul-de-sac carried on beyond the end of Get in place, which is where the uh, current hedges and field access stops. So we carry on with a formal adopted turning area uh, in there, and then a private drive to serve the two market houses here and the three affordable units, which could be laid out in a terrace there on the uh, the other side, opposite the uh, the uh, Spine Road. The actual surface water drainage would be in the southern part of the site and would form an open ditch which would then pipe water away from the existing village uh, over to the left-hand side uh, to a scheme here, which shows the actual drainage ditch running over a culvert to water to a water course that would go under the road. That would be altered slightly. They'd be reprofiling the road to tip the water into the culvert and take it away from the village to the south. So it'd also be worked along this area um, to help alleviate any surface water. So you can see how it fits into the wider scheme to, 
uh, resolve the current um, surface water drainage issue there. So we'll leave it on that particular slide. Um, so the, despite the increase in the site area, um, uh, we feel that this is, uh, whilst it's a departure, advertises a departure from the development plan, it's, it's not a, uh, an unacceptable departure in that it's, uh, the, the site area is justified by accommodating the surface water drainage scheme. Uh, and uh, mitigation can be, for, uh, can be provided in the form of uh, robust hedgerow planting to, get, to frame the development to the north uh, and uh, west and to some extent the east to actually uh, give it a, 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 a proper edge to the settlement then uh, whilst uh, accommodating much needed affordable housing. Uh, the actual developable area, whilst it looks appreciably large, the actual developable area for housing only increases from 0.17 hectares to 0.19 hectares, which again I think uh, shows uh, the actual land take needed for the, uh, the surface water uh, drainage scheme. Uh, um, the provision of affordable housing would be ensured through a Section 106 agreement so that the market housing is not constructed without the required provision of the affordable housing. Um, and at the time of the allocation, it was recognised that the site as drawn has no identifiable boundary as part of the larger field, so the development would need to be suitably landscaped, as said, to provide adequate screening where appropriate. And this would be considered together with the layout and external appearance of the development at the reserve matter stage. Uh, and the existing hedgerow along the southern end there would be retained, uh, although it would have to be uh, in, uh, taken away slightly more to get the access in, because uh, the field gate is relatively narrow there that we saw yesterday. Uh, the layout proposed in the outline application shows two large open market dwellings to the east of the site, the Terrace of Three, uh, with an access road between the two. And this arrangement is considered to be acceptable in the context of the Patna development in the surrounding village, which is a mix of traditional detached dwellings as well as post-war ex-local authority semi-detached houses and a terrace of bungalows down to the south there. Uh, the proposed ditch in the southern part of the site has been designed to resolve the issues, as I've said, of surface water flooding in the locality. Um, the ditches will be maintained by Monmouthshire County Council, who are the responsible body for drainage, and now also the sustainable drainage system approving body. And the 10 metre strip on either side of the ditch will also be maintained by the council. This is all subject to grant, a grant application, um, and if that grant application is unsuccessful, then this scheme would need to come back, for, this housing scheme would need to come back with a revised um, proposal for surface water. So in this sense, as it's part of the current proposal on land owned and controlled by the applicant, there is a, what we call a gramping condition that requires the surface water to be put, scheme to be put in place prior to any construction work commencing on the dwellings as a safeguard to ensure that that is delivered as part of the housing proposal as, it, as it's currently proposed. Uh, highways uh, find the scheme acceptable in principle. Uh, they've suggested that the... Uh, spaces that are currently used informally by residents in the top of the turning head to park in. So that, that area would, would become uh, part of the extended highway uh, and then this area might be used to actually provide more formal parking for those residents but that would need to be firmed up as part of the layout of in the reserve matters. Um, we can't dedicate those spaces to individuals but that there would be um, pres presumably customary use by those residents uh, as, there, as there, are, there is at the moment and uh, some ownership of those spaces would inevitably take, be, take place by the nearest dwellings there through usage. Uh, again, that would be, uh, as I said, uh, secured through the reserve matters application. Uh, there would be a need to look at visitor parking as was pointed out on site yesterday any schemes of five or more dwellings should provide a visitor space, but that could be looked at again as part of the reserve matters uh, for the layouts when that is submitted in due course. So we would uh, pr uh, recommend approval subject to the section 106 to secure the affordable housing and subject to the conditions which include that cramping condition about the drainage. So we would recommend approval as per the report. Thank you. Thank you, Phil. Sarah, did you want to speak or are you happy not to? 
Um, I just very briefly, I mean, I can't understate the impact of flooding on this village when it does happen. It is extensive. And so that condition around the flood alleviation scheme and being part of that wider village scheme is absolutely critical. So it's good that that's in there, or it was in the previous, when it came to you before as a committee. Um, I echo the concerns of the community council um, around the car parking spaces, but that's being highlighted today. Um, if it can improve the situation, then that's great. But again, it's, it's something that I know is a concern for the residents in that area. Um, so it's just to echo um, that and to echo the points that have been made by Lanover Community Council. So the flooding issue and the, um, the car parking one, as long as the committee satisfied that that's not going to be a, a challenge or an issue going forward then. Yeah, okay, thank you very much. Any members? Councillor Feekins. Sorry? Sorry. Can I come in anyway? Yeah. Councillor Feekins. Thank you. Cheers. Thank you. Um, uh, just a few quick questions, uh, uh, not necessarily technical questions, but just to give me a better understanding. I know 60-40 sites don't come forward very often. Um, uh, it would be nicer to see, and maybe we should think about this around the policies, around our policies when 60-40 sites do come forward, the relationship of the affordable houses within that 60-40 site would be more appropriately split, as at the moment we're looking at probably 75 to 25% split maybe, to so the open market housing, and we've got three affordable housing units squashed down one corner, notwithstanding that this is an outline uh, application, but, but just in the relationship of how those sites come forward. Um, but the other thing uh, for that is how do we uh, make sure, now that we've pushed the boundaries of the site that much further out, um, which I can understand the reasons and, and justifiable reasons for it, um, but uh, how do we then stop infill happening in between those houses and, and the, um, the existing houses? Chair, that, um, the, the points uh, that Councillor Feekins made were, were linked to what I was going to say anyway um, in terms of the, the layout. Um, I was going to take my, uh, my, my planning hat off and put my housing hat on. Um, Shirley can't be with us today, unfortunately, but I just wanted to reassure you she has been fully involved in the rejigging of this site to make sure it can work. Um, so things like um, having a terrace of three bungalows instead of detached or semi-detached affordable units um, was something that she was proactively suggesting um, in order to make the scheme stack up as well as um, extending the site to get a, a couple of slightly bigger detached units. Um, cause it, it is a borderline case, particularly with the drainage um, works that, that desperately need to happen, um, which is, is a wider benefit. So I just wanted to pass on um, a bit of a heads up on, on her points. because I know just looking at that as a plan, you might think, oh, that's not what we'd normally be seeking. Um, but she has been fully involved in this uh, and working really closely with the applicants. Uh, in terms of subdivision, um, if they did seek to subdivide one of those plots uh, and build an extra house, um, it would have to come before us for planning consent anyway. Um, but we'd be looking at um, affordable housing policies again. Uh, so, you know, we'd be looking at a 60% policy in terms of commuted sum for that one plot, as well as the obvious, you know, is there enough amenity space for the existing house and the proposed house? Um, so it wouldn't be something we could preclude um, now, but if it did happen, we'd be seeking a further affordable housing contribution and uh, looking closely at those uh, highways and amenity um, challenges. I, I think uh, there would be a separate highways access issue around that. Um, we did have uh, a fairly frank discussion behind um, closed doors in terms of, you know, is, is one solution to make the scheme work, having extra houses? You know, could it be more than five? And we concluded that wouldn't work um, because of that very narrow access road in. Um, it won't really take a, a bigger scheme. Because, you know, as you've already uh, looked at, there is no defined boundary in that field. So we just looked at it afresh and thought, well, if you didn't draw the line there, you know, why isn't it 15 houses or 10? Um, could that be a better solution? And we concluded five is, is what we get from this site. Yes. Cheers, Mark. Thank you very much for that. Um, just uh, a little bit further on that then. And again, this isn't for this application in particular. It's more about the strategy, but us moving forward. Are we able to tie these sites up to say that in perpetuity with the Section 106 agreement, that would always be 60-40 land, so that when that land came forward, if it did come forward for subdivision at a later point in time, it would automatically come forward with, a, um, uh, with, with the Section 106 agreement tied to it? No, I don't think so. I think it will be the policy that's in place at the time. So if they were to wait um, and subdivide um, under our new LDP um, and the policy is 50%, then they'll be caught by that. If the policy is 80%, they'll be caught by that. Um, 
yeah, I think it would be whatever plans in place, whatever policies in place at the time they apply. Okay, nobody else is wishing to speak. Would somebody move? Louise. Are you moving it, Louise, or do you want to speak? Uh, no, I'll just speak. Okay, yeah, thank you, Chairman. Yeah, um, in terms of the, I mean, obviously this is uh, an outline application that deals with um, the um, a access and also the principle of development, um, but um, I, I certainly would like to see um, a bit less um, in terms of sizes. I appreciate you talk about viability of the scheme, but um, uh, you know the affordable are considerably smaller in size than the other two properties. And um, I mean, it may be just to do with the constraints of this particular site because of the access, but um, uh, I mean, I don't know whether or not the affordable on the left-hand side could move a bit further over to get a bit more space in, in that direction or not. I don't know what's at the back there, whether that's, um, is that supposed to be garden or, or what? Yeah, to the, to the left of the affordable units, you can see um, their, their roof pitch is a, is a central ridge, um, so that striping indicates the back roof slope. Um, there's garden space to the rear, and then beyond that, that is actually a defined field boundary, and then beyond that is a, is a different field. I'm not even sure if that's in the, uh, the applicant's uh, ownership, the land beyond. Um, if you look, oh, there we are, that plan shows it as well. Um, I oh, know there is land beyond uh, beyond the field boundary actually, from memory of uh, mm. of being there on site. You can see how long the gardens are next door. Um, but uh, that that longer stretch, um, in red, that's where the drainage proposal goes mm. and how it touches the uh, the the edge of the site and the the drainage channel it needs to link into. Does that make sense? Um, the other thing I was going to mention, Phil, if you don't mind going back to that other slide. Uh, yeah, if you look at the uh, the three bungalows immediately to the south of the the blue um, outlined area, um, in terms of of size of plot and uh, and unit, um, they're broadly comparable. So it's it's a pretty mixed area. It's a mix of fairly new, larger detached houses, a couple of traditional detached houses, um, some former local authority, I suspect, houses in pairs of semis with. Um, mostly very long thin gardens uh, and then those bungalows um, size of the units obviously that have to comply with dqr standards um, for the affordable units so uh, the actual uh, dimensions of the living accommodation will be controlled by that route as well councillor feekins i'd like to move for approval please chair okay is that seconded do you want to speak or no uh, i i'll just second it i i was going to but this has been a uh, Recommended for approval, I'll second it. Okay, it's been moved and seconded for approval. All those in favour, please show. All but um, against you. Yeah, one against. Are you against? Thank you. Oops, that brings us to the end of the application this afternoon. I think, Mark, you wish to address us over this? Yeah, yeah only um, simply, sorry. No, no, that's fine for this. But it's to simply just to explain the, the booklet you were given earlier is is a, a rare species that is a paper edition of a national planning policy from Welsh Government. And so you're probably aware you've heard us talking about um, Planning Policy Wales Edition 10, um, PBW 10. Um, normally they do uh, relatively minor updates and do them online with a really helpful explanation of what's changed. Um, PBW 10 is a pretty fundamental rewrite of the entire thing, um, hence... Uh, We've got uh, paper copies for you, courtesy of the Welsh Government, um, for you to have a have a, a read through. Um, we can take you through in a separate session another time some of the headlines from it. Um, but you'll know one or two of them already. There's talk around a, a reinforced sustainable transport hierarchy. You'll know about that from the, the call-in on the Raglan uh, application. Um, but there's some, uh, some interesting, helpful parts in there um, in that regard, bearing in mind we're a rural county. Um, there's also a really... Um, strong emphasis on placemaking um so that's semi-planning jargon for you know it is the spaces around the buildings not just the buildings themselves that we're looking at you know the connectivity the green infrastructure that we talk to you about all the time um and really making sure they're quality environments uh, in terms of the surroundings um not just the architecture of the buildings themselves so they're probably uh, two of the big changes um but we'll uh, get to grips with those over over coming months 
uh, as we're talking to you about applications going forwards. Thanks, Chair. Thank you all very much indeed. That brings us to the end of the meeting. Um, Mark is going to go run through the LDP application sites now if anybody wishes to stop and listen to them if you haven't heard it already. Mm -hmm.